Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Sorry these videos are a little late. Now, to go along with the creepy theme of this video, we're going to be talking about or how I would have done Resident Evil 8 if I was Capcom. Now, I have done other videos on this channel, which I apologize for this video being very late and there's a lack of uploads. These do take so much time, sorry. Um, but please check out the other videos on the channel. But these videos are meant as like my ideas and stuff, so I wanted to approach how I would have done Resident Evil 8, because as someone who really likes this franchise, and I have done videos on Devil May Cry, so from Devil May Cry 3, 2, and 5 Special Edition, please check those out, thank you. <laughs> I wanted to do a video a little bit different, pivot to another Capcom franchise that I really enjoy. Resident Evil. <laughs> now, as a fan of the series, I had to be in a different mindset when writing the script for this video or being in a different mindset, period, when coming up for ideas with this video. Because Resident Evil 8 does have a lot of problems, mainly being a first-person RE4 clone. Now, I know there's the diehards that love anything that Capcom does, and then there's the other people that are OGs that hate some of the things that they're doing. I know I'm not going to please everyone with this video. I'm fully aware of that, but these videos are meant for fun, just for my ideas, and that's really about it. So if you disagree, agree, all that jazz, it's perfectly fine. Just sit back and enjoy. Now, let's get into the flaws of RE8, and then we can get to why I like some elements of 7, and then we can get into my actual ideas of the video. Now, first of all, I'm fully aware that RE8 has the problem with being too much like RE4 and stuff like that. And there's a lot of elements that, you know, the hate videos have brung up that I kind of agree with. Now, I know that there's those same videos or people that did not like Elements of 7, which I'm fully aware of. But there's Elements of 7 that really are pretty cool. Now, I feel like if this is a game that's supposed to be a sequel to 7, it really feels less like that at all. <laughs> and I honestly feel like that is its biggest pitfall when the moment it was released. Now, I'm also aware that they marketed with the giant MILF <laughs> as the main villain in a sense, but even though she's not, uh, and that was another thing. <laughs> and let's get into Resident Evil 7 and some of the things I liked about that. Now, I'm fully aware a lot of people say Resident Evil 7's too scary, and a lot of people say it's not that scary, but I personally find it very scary at times, and then there's a lot of times I find it to be just kind of dumb, but it's still entertaining, and it's storytelling, it's horror, and the way it's designed. Now, I know a lot of people don't like first-person cameras. That's fine. But I personally like it, and I like how they kind of changed it up with this game, and kind of worked within a certain system. Now, with all that aside, <laughs> how would I have done Resident Evil 8 Village? Now, I honestly feel like Capcom really was struggling with this one, even though it does have some very interesting elements. And I do know that they're following it up from Resident Evil 7, which was probably very, very scary and the scariest game in the franchise, as a lot of people, I feel like this game could have been even scarier and could have been handled a lot different. Now, with all my complaints and praises aside, I feel like that this game could have really done an, a massive overhaul in the sense of making it an actual sequel to 7, but a different one if that. Now, some elements with the RE4 influence are fine, but how they're handled, <sighs> no. So I want to take it back to the survival horror roots and make it genuinely scary again, <laughs> and that's the first thing. Now, I would honestly change certain elements of the story and also implement the idea of the choice system, but actually make it make sense and actually work. <laughs> <laughs> and also, you don't get as much action-style st gameplay until maybe the midway point of the game. Now, I'm fully aware that Ethan Winters is supposed to be the blank slate type character, <laughs> but 
I honestly like that Village does give him a bit of a personality. But I want to change certain elements of the story and retcon the stuff that just makes no sense or just doesn't work. Because the story is, at times, terrible. <laughs> so I would honestly do a massive overhaul there, which I might do in a separate video and kind of like go into detail about that. But um, let's just get into the characters, the gameplay, and some elements of the map. Starting off with characters. Now, the main protagonist is obviously Ethan Winters, and yes, Chris would still be a part of the story, but I honestly would change some elements of his character in this story and be kind of like <laughs> Ada Wong-esque, but less of a dick than he is in the regular story, because there's elements just, just with the story that just make him kind of a jackass just for no reason. Um, Mia Winters would actually play a massive role in the story, and also Mother Miranda would still be the main villain, but I feel like changing some elements with the choice system, giving us Heisenberg as our secondary main villain, or potential ally, <laughs> would be interesting. Now, I do feel like the elements of having each of these four lords and maybe a couple secondary antagonists that do play a role in the story, which I might get into later in the video, would add on to this interesting plot line leaving, going from Seven to Village. Now, I wouldn't change much about the setting, but the map I would honestly overhaul <laughs> because it does suffer through a lot of problems. Um, some of the gameplay I feel is somewhat fine, but I would honestly change it for the beginning of the game to be more survival horror, but advanced. Kind of like, in a sense, you know, overhauling it to be a little bit more different, but kind of taking elements from 7 that worked and tweaking certain things, but making it a lot better. Now, I feel like RE4 Remake did handle this type of situation a lot better, so I kind of feel like if I was Capcom, I would kind of handle it like that. So, <laughs> with all that aside, what things and features would be, bring, be, uh, be bringing back? So, first of all, <laughs> I would be bringing back the backpack system or the thing that was in the concept art stage for Ethan Winters. I would also massively overhaul the lichens. Something that I feel like was really weird is that the lichens were on horses, they had weapons and stuff like that. And I feel like the lichens could have been the most scary type basic enemy in the entirety of the game. But they really don't have that intelligence factor. Like they still have intelligence, but they're a lot you know, beast-like, compared to the molded from Seven. And that's something I want to capitalize on. Seven's enemy, not Seven, Eight's enemies have a lot more intelligence and a lot more, they can chase you, they have weapons, they can, you know, hurt you, like, you're like fighting another protagonist almost, <laughs> but one that's still lesser. And that's something I want to capitalize on. Compared to 7, with the enemy types and different things, I feel like this game has the ability to be a lot more mixed between action and survival horror the way that 4 Remake handled it. So, <laughs> with the Lycans, I want to kind of be them have this overwhelming, very monstrous, less slow... Like, I want it to be a mixture of what we had in 7, but still have this, you know, think on the toes, you know, like, very scary, like, you, you're, you try not to die <laughs> type feel. Like, almost like that feeling you had running from Nemesis or Mr. X, that's what I want for the main enemies. Like, they have that feel, if you get what I mean. And... I do want the village to have more of a role, <laughs> in a sense, because it's in the name, 
and I want there to be that some of the villagers do have a role besides just dying. They still, some do die, but I do feel like they do have this, you know, almost feel of like being there in a sense. Like Elena, she does survive. She plays the um, Zoe type role and there's other characters I want to like in the village. Maybe we can make up a few that do come through this story and stuff like that. <laughs> The Duke uh, would function somewhat the same, maybe tweak his you know stuff near the beginning. But he, I like how he's you know presented, and I think also he does have a lore type function, in a sense where he can also tell you things about you know the village that you would know and flesh out more the lore that you know you wouldn't get that we didn't really get. Um, in the original game because the game did have a lot of pacing problems and a lot of just inconsistencies and stuff like that so that would be the first thing and uh yeah <laughs> um there's some enemy types i might bring back because you know they were in concept art and i feel like they could work um but yeah let's get into the different uh lords and then the different uh sections of the game and then and all that now, first up is the castle. <laughs> the MILF herself, Lady D, let's get into this first. <laughs> oh boy. Now, I have a lot of problems with this section for it being too simplistic, short, not really a lot going on, and just it feels very bare bones at times. I kind of understand some of the hate, uh, hate for uh, some elements of Resident Evil 8, now, I do understand that Under DeMeo did do a video <laughs> talking about it, and I kind of agree with some points that he did make, make about it. Now, I usually disagree with a lot of things he says, and I personally am not a fan, <laughs> but I understand some of his points with this game in particular. Now, how I would fix this section would be the castle in each section of the game, like the game would be overall longer. <laughs> um, and I would honestly do some things and tweak things that really, besides just the story, which I might do a video rewriting the story as a whole in a separate video. <laughs> but um, this, this section would be a lot bigger. The castle from the outside, it looks like this humongous thing, but you pull up the map and it's very small, which was something that bothered me a little bit. Now, I understand that even in Resident Evil 4 Classic and Remake, the castle and that thing is kind of sometimes a bit small, but it's still a bit big. So there's not room to backtrack the way there is with like the police station and stuff like that. But I feel like with this, I would honestly give this section a massive overhaul. Now, something that I liked from 7 that I want to return is that each section of the game has a different type of horror. Now, if you if you played 7, you get that Jack has slasher horror, Marguerite has body and bugs horror, Lucas has psychological and like jigsaw type horror. Well, I want that to be a focus with this game where each section is remarkably longer and each you spend an equal amount of time with each lord <laughs> and basically you have the, their maps would be distinctly different and have a different type of horror to focus on. For the castle, I want it to be this gothic horror, bugs-like horror from like the past game and also like a historic horror. Now, when I say historic horror, I mean in a sense of like, you know how like you read about the, the terrible things that people would do in, for torture and, and war, like that type of like so sick to your stomach, or like if you read in the news, like some twisted serial killer was doing this type of stuff, that type of feeling, I want an emphasis on that for the castle section, that type of horror. And I know that doesn't make much sense, but it will. Now, with making this castle a lot bigger, I also want 
Lady D to be a lot more of a focus. So I do distinctly want <laughs> each of the daughters to be put in a certain section. Now, you do have the option to never kill any of the daughters at all, or you have the option to kill them. And this could influence your story in a slightly different facet, because I was pulling a lot from Resident Evil 3 Classic when coming up with some of the ideas for this game. <laughs> so, in a sense, that each daughter would be in a different part of the castle. Now, they would play the role of <laughs> uh, our basically, what's the word, stalker enemy. Now, you would have certain stalker moments in the game. I want to bring those back. And I know a lot of people don't like them because, you know, they do get annoying if you're trying to speed run and stuff like that. I get that. But I still find that heart wrenching, you know, running away feeling cool, <laughs> you know. And I want to add something with the daughters. Now, each one attacks you and goes after you in a distinctly different way. Now, this is something I was pulling from Seven as a whole with this section. Each daughter, <laughs> you know, kind of plays a different type of game. Kind of like how Jack is slasher, Marguerite is like bugs and body, and you know, Lucas is psychological. The daughters would have a different type of scary factor to them, and you would learn about them, and that you would hear what they were doing, and maybe even have moments like you do in the base game with seeing Dimitrescu, which you still will have, but you have different moments with the daughters seeing some stuff they get up to. <laughs> and oh boy, that's where the fun kicks in. So... For, so for the first daughter, <laughs> and basically, you do have the option to shoot windows and kind of lessen their ability to come and go after you. Because I do like the ability that they can move through vents, they can move through under doors. So if you're in a safe room, you think you're safe, you're not. <laughs> There's actually a brief cutscene with where you basically go in to like meet the Duke and you're you know saving and stuff like that. One of the daughters comes through the underneath the door and say, Oh, you think you were safe in here? <laughs> and like she tries to go after you, you have to book it. Um, so that was something I want to have this overwhelming factor. Feeling that you had with Mr. X or Nemesis is the feeling you would get when you're, you know, being chased not just by the doc daughters but also um, Lady D. Now her role would honestly increase as like she's chasing you through the the castle, and there's moments where she corners you and nearly almost wounds you and stuff like that. I want because through the concept art, there was like moments where apparently she was supposed to be more of this overwhelming threat. And that's something that I want to keep. And I feel like, you know, having this section be a lot bigger, a lot more, you know, of that true Spencer mansion and, you know, Baker house feel to it feels a lot better and would be a lot cooler to see, you know, just, um, the boss fight with her near the end, I feel like could be optional. The whole blade thing is actually, you know, hinted at near almost the beginning of the section. Um, and almost, you know, certain elements of the aha moments and other stuff would, you know, come back. But, uh, beyond that, the, the castle would be the, the thing that gets overhauled the most and certain elements would be changed around. But moving on to Bill Viento, uh, this section I would keep roughly the same. <laughs> this is the one section in the game that actually is very scary. Uh, it's very psychological horror. It's very haunted horror. And I don't mind that. I feel and, like that type of yeah. horror works for this section. But I would honestly tweak it a little bit more. Now, I was recently watching Coraline. Uh, and like there was moments of this animated horror kids film that genuinely scared the shit out of me. And I wanted to pull a little bit from that. Um, and I wanted sections where Ethan is also having to face like little enemies besides just the baby. 
Um, which that thing is stain. It scared the fuck out of me. It scared the fuck out of everybody else. That thing is stain. <laughs> um, but I wanted to have this like scary doll like uh, horror and pulling a little bit from like Nightmare on Elm Street and other stuff with the way it's positioned. I like this section because it pulls a lot from like Silent Hill and other stuff, but there's elements I would honestly tweak um, and have it be almost like the betas for Resident Evil 4 and certain things. Like, I like elements of it, but this would be the section where, like, Mia would make, you know, haunted, you know, in like, things and would scare the crap out of Ethan. Like, the little illusions of people that Ethan knew. And even maybe have something from, like, Jack or Lucas or, like, Marguerite or stuff maybe, you know, pushing and, you know, messing around with Ethan. Um, now, I would honestly, after this section, this is where I would have mini, uh, mini antagonist boss-like thing. Um, now, this would honestly be something distinctly different. Uh, this would be maybe a character that you have had, like, the whole thing with the mansion burning down, that whole thing would still probably happen, but... Elena would probably separate from Ethan. You have the option to, you know, save her or, like, you know, she let her, you know, kill herself, which, you know, is, would influence certain things. But the grandfather, if you choose the second option, would live. And this would, this pulled a little bit from the concept art where basically there was this grandfather like character. Um, I want him to be a mini boss that, you know, starts to um it's kind of like the lord of the lichens now um because i want him to influence like have this like mini boss thing and he briefly you know you know sends you know changes things up um or maybe it has like a slaw like almost like a hunted feel like i was pulling from like underworld and stuff like that so that's why I wanted to have him come back. I really liked him, even though he plays like a brief thing and he gets turned into a lichen. I wanted him to be a little different uh, than some just cannon fire. And uh, maybe you might run into other villagers and sometimes he would kill a few of them and then some of them might get away. And maybe Elena would shoot him and you know he would be reminded and then like you would back off. And then you get to the third section, which is the Monroe section. Now, judging by the concept art, this is the section that I would overhaul heavily. Now, I want to pull from like an aquatic horror and this unique body horror and other stuff. I want this section to be like three parts. Uh, you know, Monroe's trying to you know hunt for what's called like bodies or whatever. You do get introduced to a Moreau type enemy, which is like the Siren, which is an enemy that was in the concept art phase, but it was never really realized because it became too hard. But I found a unique compromise that basically they have a unique type of poison effect in a sense where like they it's kind of like, you know, if you play God of War, you have the Sirens and they have this brief effect. I want something similar, and I wouldn't make them OP, but they would have to. You would have to find eventually an item that loosens your um, that effect, where you have to either find herbs or items like a earphones that you would have to like that loosen the effect of like these siren-like enemies and stuff like that. And I was pulling a lot from Jaws with this section because I feel like. Monroe can turn into a giant fish. I don't understand why in the boat you do, he doesn't attack the boat or he doesn't like you know scare the crap out of you and stuff like that. Uh, like even in Arkham City, the 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 shark can jump at at you even if you're on the raft and uh, stuff like that and can kill you. I want that type of feeling for his section, um, and I feel like you know having his section be like a little bit of splintered in three parts and then like then you get to him you finally defeat him works um 
I also feel like Heisenberg would play a major major role throughout the story, not just being the thing you know that gets you through with, with the maze and stuff. That section would be changed a little bit, but I feel like how you get introduced to them is slightly changed. Um, but yeah, <laughs> um, and you get to the final part, which is the factory. Now, this is the one where I know a lot of people say this section's too long, it's too dumb, and blah, 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 blah. Now, this is the one where this is going to be optional. There is a moment where Heisenberg gives you a choice to join him to take down Miranda and save Rose or not to and, you know, basically whatever. And in the game, he just throws you in because you say no. This felt like a moment where they could have gave you a, a choice. And this is something that really bothered me with the game, that you do not get one. And this is where a massive overhaul comes into play. Whether you, if you choose to join Heisenberg or not, is will always influence, like certain choices you make in the game, like certain interactions, like for instance with Chris or with Miranda, because I want her to, or the hag or whatever, play a part in the game. Now I also want to have moments where you get transmissions and it's coming from this mysterious thing and she keeps getting pulled off the radio that would be mia she's captured and secretly it's by miranda and heisenberg knows this and he if you join him says you know your wife's not dead chris did not kill her miranda took her and you, whether you join Heisenberg or join Chris, slightly tweaks the outcome and, you know, and, and for Miranda's defeat. Now, if Miranda, if you join Heisenberg, he might get destroyed or might, you know, blah, blah, blah. And his section would slightly change depending on what you do. Now, I, I would honestly tweak the section a little bit. But that's really about it. Like, I personally like that it's very puzzle-focused. It's very interesting. Like, Monroe's section, it would be more aquatic puzzles, you know, doing certain things. And it would have a, a certain type of horror feel, like this Jaws, like, dun 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 type horror. But for Heisenberg, it feels like this section's perfect mostly how it is now yes it does need a lot of tweaking and overhauling and yes if you get a choice to join heisenberg or not that would influence like well okay if that's the case if you join him well, what happens then you lose access to the factory no but you wouldn't get attacked as bad but there would be new enemies that replace it and you might have to partner with the enemies like that heisenberg makes so it would have this like freaking uh, separate ways type feel with like Ada and um, Luis. So in a sense, I would honestly have this game be a little bit more action-y slightly, but still have that horror feel towards the end. Um, and that's where like the Akashé case comes in now where you can now use it on separate playthroughs. But the backpack system would be the thing that you use mainly throughout the game. And like the crafting and the certain things that you would have from, you know, seven would still play a role, but they would slightly be tweaked and stuff like that. I feel like the problem with the game being too actioning towards the end is that, or towards like throughout the game, a whole thing, at least in the base game, is that it takes away from the horror. And with this getting more action towards the end, it gives you that feel. Now, this would give us the whole thing of, well, well wait, what about uh, the Chris section? Now, this would happen regardless. Now, it would slightly change, and Ethan would not get killed by Miranda if you join Heisenberg. Um you, I think the whole thing with him being molded, I would honestly rewrite the story, which I might save for another video. But I feel like this whole bit would feel a little bit different this time around. 